We're ready. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're ready to respond to Article 8, Section B. Okay. And our position is. We agree. Okay, great. And so that's another T8 item. Okay. It's experience for salary. Eight B. Twenty-one. I just steal Gonzalez. I can't find my number. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. And we presented you with our adaptation to our previous counter proposal on Article 4, Section C, voluntary transfer period. And basically, what we did was add in an option for a teacher at a non Title I school to transfer to a non Title I or Title I school in the second year. Okay, so from a non high needs school to a non high needs high school? High needs, right. Okay. Because we understood the challenge <laughs> as related to, you know, maintaining full employment at high needs schools. So uh, we're just saying that this would take place in the second year from a non high needs school to a non high needs school or high needs schools, actually, as far as that goes. But that's already would be that would already be in place with the first with the first option, with the option where if they completed their probation period. Okay, we'll have to kind of run this by our team and take a look at. All it. right, and then we added in near the bottom as defined by the district with input from the association during December of each year. Okay. Give us a second on the second year to take a look. Okay. Well, we appreciate um, that we've been able to make quite a bit of movement today, and the, the salary proposal you came in was uh, refreshing. Uh, it was it was something that I think we can work with. Um, 
We do have some limitations. The other monetary items you've, you've talked about, um, the 100% discount for aftercare, the $45 an hour, the $1,000 for the ESE teachers, to get to where you are on that salary proposal, those aren't even in the same state, much less the same ballpark is where we need to be. Okay, our question would be, uh, we realize that you're saying that what we're asking for is not within the range of probability, uh, but some version. I, I'm not even sure some version is, is able to be reached with the salary proposal you asked, and it is, it's, um, your salary proposal is in the range of reasonable, it's, you know, it's a good place for us to, to be, but um, I'll let Mr. Burke talk about that. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, first of all, we, we do uh, greatly appreciate your offer. I think it helps us kind of keep these negotiations moving at a good pace, and it's, uh, I think you kind of appreciate that we are in Florida and our, the board is limited in the revenue they can get out of Tallahassee each year. So I appreciate that. Uh, I think our teachers are probably the best thing we can do is provide the largest recurring salary increase we can for the whole group. And uh, rather than counter today, we wanna to go back and work a little more to see if we were to go all in and do some things to try to even uh, free up more funds within the board's budget, uh, I would be aspiring to try to get close to the salary offer or try to get to where you guys are trying to get on the base salaries, basically. And these other items, the uh, that going from $25 to $45 on the additional period supplement, that's that's millions, uh, can you suppose we figure about four million or so? And it's, it's not just that it's four million, it's also the high school principals are buying those supplements using their and many times they're AP and IB and ACE dollars that they generate, and they're not gonna be able to continue what they're doing if the rate goes up that much. Uh, so even if we agreed to it, I think if it would cause problems for our high school scheduling, uh, and it would just take so much money off what we're able to do for salaries in general. Uh, the other, the, the ESE uh, additional supplement to kind of differentiate their pay, uh, that's, that's a few million dollars as well. That's close to $3 million, I believe. So when you put those things together, you're talking about almost a percent. You know, it's about $7.5 million for every 1% we increase CTA's uh, salaries or base salaries, and that's basically shifting a percent of what we could do with, with our offer into those kind of two areas. So as we work to come back with a, a, another salary proposal for you, I just think it might be helpful the group realize that we're gonna be dealing with some constraints and we may need to focus in on what's our greatest priority and try to bring these negotiations you know, to a, a successful outcome. So I know we're, we're scheduled to come back Monday. Yeah, we're scheduled for Monday. Mm -hmm. That works for us pretty well. That gives me some time to work with the superintendent and see what we can do and come back with our best salary offer uh, next Monday. Um. With regards to the, the children of employees, had, had there been any consideration for the other component that had to do with um, allowing students to enter into feeder and then post parent school? We, school have, a, we have a counter proposal <coughs> almost ready, but there's, there's because the way our, our district works, we have some schools that are full choice. We have to look at that and see what impact that would be to them because we, you know, we had the principal of Dreyfus sitting at our table. She really doesn't have a feeder or receiving schools. I mean, she's a high school, so she doesn't have any feeder schools, except would that be considered the full district? Um, it, it gets a little unwieldy mm -hmm. uh, on some of these. Um, and then looking at schools that have part choice, have choice programs there. Um, so we're, we're working on a proposal for you on that. We, we feel that there are some principals who um, would like to have that benefit. Um, they have their kids at the school. We have the principal at Welling Land Wellington Landings here this morning. Um, her feeder school is Wellington High School, and she said she has teachers in tears because their kids have been with those students all this time, and 
want to move on. So we are putting some serious consideration in it, but it's going to have to have some constraints mm -hmm. around those choice programs. Um, so we're trying to get that language accurate. And it's it's taken a little while. There's a lot of moving parts to it. And we every time we think we have a we've gotten there. There's some. But well, what about this school? Because it has this little tweak to it, like we found out with Dreyfus today. So we do. We are giving some consideration to that, um, and we are working on a proposal for you. We'll have that ready on Monday. We under we understand uh, your concerns, and we appreciate you working to to find some version that's agreeable. Okay. Is there anything else? Okay, you didn't come up with uh, anything on adjusting that one item on the mandatory in-service? I do have that, but what we're going to do is we'll bring it back on Monday. I, I, I have done that proposal. We have a stack of them sitting on my desk right now. I just want to read through and make sure that there's no spelling errors. They're good to go instead of rushing it. Um, yeah, I've added the language that the parties agree that this will be an additional item for bargaining for FY20. So I think we have a TA on that one. We just I want to have it printed out and make sure it's it's a grammatically and accurate. Okay, on those other items, you know, you know, we understand the, you know, how in some instances it can be cost challenging. We just ask that you kind of look at other options of how that might might fit in if at all, all possible. And I just looked at my calendar. We're scheduled for 1.30 on Monday, from 1.30 to uh, 4.30 here in the boardroom. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thank you.